I'm Nicole Wilmer, and today I am going to be using Save the Cat Writes a Novel on my novel. So, I am checking in with you when I have just finished scene 14 of my second draft of my novel. And this is a good stopping point because this is potentially the end of the first act, maybe a little bit sooner than that, but I have gotten to a point where I've kind of written the beginning of the story and I am going to go back, reread the whole first 14 scenes, and then go to save the cat as well as, and then, yeah, and then go to save the cat and see how well it's matching up and kind of use that to evaluate how things are going. And then I will be rewriting <laughs> and fixing things in the first act and adding and trying to set that up to bring me to the, set that up and then re sort of visiting my outline and replotting the second, third, fourth act of the novel using Save the Cat. I know this is a little against conventional wisdom. Don't edit as you write, all that stuff. Well, first of all, it's a second draft, so that does not apply. But also, um, I feel like I need to have a good foundation for going forward. And I think one of the problems I had with the first draft was I was like, just keep writing, even though I knew that there were problems. And I feel like Sometimes, you know, you can have problems in the first act and then you just fix it in the second act and you go back to the first act and like fix them after you have the whole thing written or something. But I feel like that doesn't work for me because I feel like if it's not set up correctly, then how am I going to make progress and pay it off correctly? You know? So, um, let's get right into it. Here we go. Okay, so here we are on the Camp NaNoWriMo website. There's my hodgepodge mishmash from NaNoWriMo. Hi, hodgepodge mishmash. I did not complete that goal. Okay, projects. And then I'm going to scroll down. I should be able to find 1837. This is a new technique that I found on Meredith Phillips Wright's channel where you can create a new goal for the same project, which is so cool. Create a new goal. Okay. I want to associate it with a NaNoWriMo event. Okay, and we're going to pretend that the goal, the words, says scenes, not words, it says scenes, because I want to write 20 scenes this month. There we go, 20 scenes, not words, 20 scenes. And save that goal, woohoo! Okay, I have a NaNoWriMo goal, amazing! Okay, so it is Monday. And I didn't do any writing all weekend, which is not um, the best, but that's okay. It was um, busy. I like went to brunch, <laughs> which I haven't done in over a year, so that was very fun. So basically, I have been really just kind of thinking through my story this morning um, and going over kind of what needs to be changed or added to, and I am using Save the Cat as a little bit of a helper here. Um, but honestly, when I reread my story, I saw things that, overall, I actually think it's, it's pretty good, but there are things that are missing and that I think this is a good time to fix. So for example, um, I feel like I start at an, a place that grabs your attention However, there are a few things that, because I start at that place, that I feel like the, the normalcy for the family isn't quite established, if that makes sense. Like, I start like a half second too late, I think. I am, I really love the book The Rose Code, and the first page of that is basically you know, in such and such a year, the Germans invented Enigma to send their coded messages. They thought it was unbreakable. It wasn't. And it's so, like, gripping, but it also sets you up in the story and, like, gives you an automatic, like, fast idea of what's going on. And I feel like something like that could be very useful at the start of mine because there's a figure who's very big in the 1837 Rebellion whose name is Mackenzie. William Mackenzie, and he actually doesn't factor into my story very much. Um, 
in this version of it, which I think is totally fine because that's not kind of the perspective that I'm taking. He will be in it eventually. And some other people who are big figures in the rebellion do come in and out. Um, so like setting up kind of the family compact with the sort of would be aristocrats versus everyone else is something that I think I could do in like a page or something like a short not even a page like a paragraph like a very short like five sentences at the start or something um I was thinking I could do a, like a a snippet from the newspaper um for every season because my book goes by seasons as well so I'm sort of debating between those two the other things are I've been kind of going back over and focusing on my characters goals and their problems and stuff and making sure that that's coming through in the current draft. I found a way to make my one character, Aggie, her goal um, become a lot more tangible and like make it seem more real. So I have to add sort of the second element to her goal in, um, which kind of has to do with that like opening image scene. Like very, we, I want to show a change between that and then the real first scene of the novel um, that I think would really quite help establish her goal there and like make that more solid and make her more like on it and then for um Greer who is my older girl what I've had her like positioned as in my head this whole time is at the beginning of the story she's trying to figure out what her next step is however part of me is toying around with the idea of her knowing what the next step is and having a tangible desire line the problem with that is she that tangible desire line if i go too far in that direction i feel like it's gonna veer me way off my path here so i'm trying to think could i tie like giving her a more tangible desire line to what she's doing in the story i don't know i keep going back to the help and how um the main character in the help skeeter she wants to be a journalist and then through wanting to be a journalist she wants to write this piece about the help and then she goes off and does her interviews and that's kind of like her underlying motivation and i was basically toying around with the idea if i could do the same thing here however i don't think it works i'm not loving it i'm not loving that idea so yeah <laughs> um I have been reading, rereading through my outline though, and I'm actually feeling pretty confident about what I have going on in the latter bits of the book, the next three acts that I have to write here. One thing that I was concerned about was if I was putting enough of the rebellion in, and if I was missing good material by focusing the story on the more political aspect and making it more of an information plot that's happening versus making it like an action we're joining this rebellion plot i do like the direction that i went with it but i was a little bit worried like oh am i missing stuff and i've been reading more and i found um i've ordered a novel that's set in the upper canada rebellion and it's all like a mystery with spies and i don't know how accurate it is but i'm gonna read it and see how this these events have been interpreted by another author but anyways i basically decided that i could fix all of my concerns with a single scene so that's good that was a good thing that i came about um i went through and i defined what the character is sort of like big moments need to be um i thought i was using save the cat for this and i, I I'm sort of am. Um, I just haven't really gotten to that point yet. This is gonna be a long vlog, but for me, big moment is like the basically their like f finale. It's probably so, yeah, it's something in the finale, like that sort of climax action, um, and what it has to do, what they have to sort of overcome in order to do that. So I have a really good grasp, I think, of what those are, and I wrote down kind of like what they have to. Aggie's big moment must be her overcoming her blah blah blah. Greer's big moment must be her overcoming blah blah blah. And so I define those, which has made me think about, um, I have those big moments written down and now I'm like, one of them in particular 
doesn't feel right still and then I wrote down like Aggie's big moment and I'm like yeah it definitely doesn't work so that's good so I'm gonna keep thinking about how I can change her action to get the same result but to ensure that like what she has to do to achieve the result makes her like sort of show that she's changed as a person and that she's like overcome her flaws here so that's good and then the other thing I've been doing is going through sort of the first act and thinking about what needs to change so there is a character that I just want to kind of not necessarily even introduce but just kind of like have as a walk-on in the first act who's going to be more important in the second act so I have to sort of make that happen and also there's a scene in the first act right now that is honestly primarily there for setup purposes kind of um it's it's an important scene and there is it's an important scene i think it's coming too early so i have it as like the third or fourth scene of this book maybe not maybe like eighth scene i have it really early and i think that doesn't work so i'm actually gonna put that in this the b character the b story slot um, because it kind of is the B story. So I'm gonna move that to the second act and say it's the B story and then I'm gonna pull up this. I've talked about this scene in pretty much every single video that I have, but I have a fire scene and in the fire scene, um, I'm, did, I haven't written it yet or like I sort of wrote it and then I was like, maybe this should be the break into two and then I was like, no. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna replace the setup scene I was talking about that's moving to the B story with the fire scene and then I can put this character who I need to sort of just walk on. They're basically going to be like mentors sort of and they're going to be really instrumental in the end so I want to sort of show them as the respected figures in the community that they are in the beginning. So and it's, anyways, <laughs> I'm excited about that change. I think that's going to work and so I will now go through the beat sheet in more detail and like plot out all my save the cat beats and then make a list of what I need to write in the first act before I move on and start the second. Yay, okay. Okay, so it is now Wednesday and the very exciting thing we have happening is my 9 a.m. meeting got canceled. So instead of doing work, I am able to write for an extra hour, which is so cool. I sat down and I kind of decided to start plotting with Save the Cat. So first, while I was writing the first act, um, I discovered something new. And so I really liked it. I thought it, I liked that idea. So I went back and I kind of wrote just a bit of like the backstory as to what that was and how that happened, just so I have it. So then I was going through Save the Cat beat. I had a really good idea for just the very beginning and the opening image and so I'm changing my opening image. I'm really excited. Well, not changing. I'm like adding a scene. It's going to be a very short scene. It's going to be like a page, if not less, um, that's going to like provide literally an image and then I have a really cool idea. It's going to be sort of the before because in the setup, something's already happened. Basically, we're st we start with like something has happened like a week ago and it's kind of put everybody a little bit on edge that's not the catalyst for the story that is like the catalyst comes later but that is kind of like the setup anyways so basically i'm gonna have the opening image being a description um in like third person omniscient of sort of everyone in the room and in a room it's gonna be at Christmas um, which makes sense because it's gonna be Christmas um, it's gonna be all of the aristocrat families are in this room celebrating together because they're all friends and then in the omniscient voice it's gonna be like they didn't know that like someone put a note on their door um, kind of like how in Harry Potter they like leave Harry on the doorstep kind of like a like a before we get into Harry's perspective, or there's this middle grade series written by Anna Martin called Camden Falls. Um, and she does something called a peek in the windows where she like goes around town and looks at what everybody is doing. So it's kind of like that, except it's only once and it's one family, but you know. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm really excited to write that. 
Then I'm just kind of going through like my setup, catalyst, and debate. And I'm going to be honest, um, <laughs> I have also, I have Save the Cat open, but I also have the Anatomy of Story Beats open or Steps open because I've been thinking about it and I've been thinking about the fact that I really like the Anatomy of Story, I think, better. Or at least in some ways, it has strengths that I want to use. So I am going to continue the exercise of doing Save the Cat with this because I think they can both provide a lot of value. There's that. But the, the first act of Save the Cat really isn't that different from like any story structure ever. You know, you like have your exposition or your setup or whatever you call it. You have your inciting incident or your catalyst or whatever you call it. And then you usually have some sort of like refusal of the call or debate as they call it here. Um, the interesting thing is that I feel like my setup and debate are, are kind of mixed up because the catalysts for my characters, they're, for the genre that they're in, they are catalysts, but I don't think they seem as big as they will become, if that makes sense at first glance. Like, the, the catalyst here for one of my characters is another character, Drew, asks Aki to dance at a ball, right? This is the first time she meets him, this is whatever. And then we go into a little bit of a series where she's honestly like thinking about it and then I have a scene or two where like they see each other again and they talk <laughs> like people and get to know each other before I can get to the point where he like, there's like another catalyst where he comes and asks her to go slaying and that's the point where she really debates and she's like oh no so Okay, so it is Thursday. I am no longer staring downwards at my camera, and uh, it is also the first day of Camp NaNoWriMo. So, um, today I may or may not be getting a scene done off my list. I should be able to, because one of the scenes is literally the epigraph, <laughs> which should be like 300 words, so I should be able to knock it off. But today I finished outlining act two with Save the Cat. Finished, I'm sure like, this might change a little bit at some point, but I feel pretty good about where I am. I had a really amazing epiphany today. The way that I had it before, one of my main characters, she has, she's the one who has to overcome the most growth in the story. And she, her plan for act two had been very like i don't know like i would say not proactive kind of situation had been my plan and then i was thinking about the anatomy of story even though this blog is a blog is supposed to be about the save the cat i'm sorry it, it's not <laughs> like I, I have the words break into two and fun and games written on my sheet, I promise. But fun and games is just so directionless. They're like, okay, you're gonna write 30% of your novel, go. That I had to kind of pull out the anatomy of story to help me figure out what I was gonna put in there. Um, anyways, so I was, I was thinking about it and I came up with an idea or I came up with a way for her to, I guess her weakness is gonna kind of get worse and worse almost like she's going or her flaw the thing that she's doing that's like not so good is going to become more and more prominent over this act till we get to the midpoint which is kind of the apparent defeat moment where it kind of all blows up if that makes sense i like that i've added that element i think that's going to be great and now i'm getting i'm like getting more and more excited to write this and like the characters are feeling like they're shaping up a lot more for this act and everything so I'm really excited. Um, so basically, yes, I sat down and I was like, hey, I'm gonna plot this using Save the Cat. But for the Save the Cat beats, I'm pretty sure the second act pretty, well, part one of the second act, because I think of it 
story as in four acts. It's just more helpful for me, at least for this story anyways. So the, the, the parts before the midpoint, it's literally break into two, fun and games, and then the midpoint. So the major break into two is a one scene and midpoint is one scene. So that's two scenes. And then there were like, I don't know, 15, 16 other ones <laughs> to figure out. So at that point, I pulled out the anatomy of story because the anatomy of story has some great structure steps. I'll put this up. It's a screenshot of myself holding a screenshot because I left the book in Canada, which is just a problem that continues to plague my life. Here we are. So there are steps around step like six, seven, they have, so they have the inciting event as step four. Then they have desire. So your character like firms their desire. That's kind of the break into two, I think. Then ally, then opponent, fake ally opponent, first revelation and decision, plan, opponent's plan, drive, attack by ally, apparent defeat. So apparent defeat is what I'm thinking of as the midpoint in this story. So I was really working from first revelation and decision, which is kind of my break into two moment to plan. So I was like, okay, what is my character's plan? And I put my character's plan in and then it was opponent's plan. And so I had my opponent's plan oppose my character's plan. So they suffer like a first defeat and then the drive kicks in, which is their like action, like working towards the goal. Um, and the thing with anatomy of story, they say that like to have a really powerful story, your character should be taking immoral actions. So that's the one thing I really like about that um, methodology where it has, okay, have your characters like immoral actions sort of ramping up. For the one character, she's not really taking immoral actions. I mean, in the context of the society, yes. In the context of 2021, no. But then the other character in the context of 2021 is definitely taking, or any time period, is definitely taking immoral actions. So those are ramping up, and then my other character just has like a straight off drive trying to achieve this goal. And yeah, I have it plotted, which is so exciting. And I'm feeling re-energized. Like anytime I sort of sit back and outline things, I get re-energized to write it. And so I think this whole like stopping every act to reevaluate to do a little bit of like high level editing and then to replot going forward based on what I've written is a really, really good strategy for me. So yay, I'm going to try to write later tonight, but I will not be vlogging about that because this video will probably be posted by the time that I'm writing. So yes, I'm just very excited to write this now and I hope I actually get to write most of it in April because it's a lot just looking at it, but we can do it. It'll be fun. I hope. Some of these scenes are actually very short, so that's okay. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me how your first day of Camp Nanoremo is going. What are you working on? What are your goals? And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.